Hello everyone, my name is Abby and today we are here to talk about Season 2, Episode 4 of Shadowhunters Day of Wrath. So my goodness, this episode was kind of actually insane. So I feel like the showrunner change was very obvious in from from the move of episode 3 to episode 4. I feel like there was a really really big twist in dynamics and the character like the dialect just seemed so much smoother. And the discussion that I talked about last week, I really talked about the fact that the arcs were kind of getting a lot smoother and I feel like this episode has just taken it such a step forward. I am super super proud of this episode. I think that it is probably one of my favorites so far in season two. I thought that we just had so much good growth and not as much step back as we've had in some of the past episodes. We are going to be of course talking about some things that I would have liked to have changed or some things that I feel like would have gone a little better but just overall as an episode I was really really happy with it. So let's go ahead and kind of jump in and talk about kind of step by step what my thoughts were. Okay, so the first thing that we see immediately when we start this episode is Cleary walking into the City of Bones, which, can I just say, looks and sounds so much darker and so much cooler than what we've seen before. And this little scene with Jace and Clary that we got where Clary went to Jace and was just talking about how, you know, it's the two of them. Like, we can, they can figure it out together. They can fight off with whoever they need to together. And Jace is pretty much telling her, you know, no, this cannot be a thing like this is not good what we have between me and you like this needs to stop that just that whole thing was very real it felt so good like this first little scene was the perfect scene to start us on because it's showing that vulnerability and our love for Clay. So, you know I feel like you know Clary and Jace have really been on the back side of things now that this sibling thing is in effect and I'm really glad that we got the scene because I feel like it just kind of shows that vulnerability that they still have for each other and the not like the non-surety of what's gonna happen in the future I thought that it was really really good and I feel like this this little clip kind of set the tone and kind of set the mood for the insanity that we were about to go through. Like just one little teeny line that they actually did mention like right at the very beginning was before Jace and Clary really even started talking, Jace was immediately like, is Alex safe? Is he alright? And I really am so glad that they put that in there because a lot of people have been talking that, you know, they don't really understand how the pair of a tie bond has gotten so one-sided about the fact that Alex seems to be feeling so much for Jace and feeling in so much pain and so like distraught while really Jace hasn't. I feel like I'm just glad that they put that one little like comment in there because you know that kind of shows that like Jace is like really really concentrated on Alec right now and just wants to make sure that he's okay. I just I appreciated that. It was a little thing but I really liked it. Speaking of Alec though we got an adorable Alec and Magnus scene where they're talking about the first date that they haven't been able to go on which uh, a lot of the pictures and stuff are leading towards the fact that they're finally going to get a first date next week in the next episode and I'm super excited about that um, and I think that their their chemistry just continues to grow and shine every scene that they're in I think it's really cute I like I just I like the banner I like the fact that also that Alec was the one that brought up the fact that they haven't been able to go on a first date yet and I think it's just really cute I'm kind of annoyed though because this scene was one of the scenes that we got as a sneak peek last week for like you know that's kind of like a hey this is what's gonna be coming up on the episode and then that was literally the only Malik scene we got for the entire episode. I'm like why are you gonna give us 
the only clip before the, the episode even airs because Mac is Malik is amazing and I don't want all their scenes to be spoiled for me before this before the episode even airs I was kind of hoping that we would have gotten at least one more scene of them together but we do already have a sneak peek of them next week with a scene so hopefully next week is not gonna be the same way where we got this one sneak peek and that's all we're gonna see but you know next week they are saying it's supposed to be the date episode so super excited about that. So then we have this whole, you know, like the, the next like really big arc that's going to be carrying us through this entire episode is the fact that there is this demon that is loose. So first Clary and Alec and, and Izzy go to look for it and I love, I just, I love the whole interaction between Alec and Clary. I think from the very beginning they have always had such good chemistry. I think that they work well together. The annoyance that Alec has for Clary is just it's very genuine <laughs> and I think that it's just so much fun to watch and the fact that he's like you know yo Frey like come on like you're with me and then like he's like walking like leisurely and she's having to like sprint to keep up with him and the whole like him that like, kind of like being like you know Idris is great I think you'd really like it there you should go and I also loved getting to see you know Izzy kind of taking over of the whole like checking for the blood and having the corpse and everything like you know we get to see that like sciency part of Izzy kind of come back out again and it's great so then backing up a little bit we have you know Jocelyn coming to Clary and being like I'm getting reassigned I have to go back to Idris and I want you to come with me. And Jocelyn pretty much says that she wants Clary to come back with her so that, we, so that way she can show Clary her roots. And I understand why we had to, you know, for like jaw dropping shocker's sake, we had to get rid of Jocelyn, which I mean, I'm not really mad about it right now. Like, besides helping guide Clary, she's not really needed. I hate to say that, but like, I was expecting it to be either her or Lydia. Those were the two people that I was like, it could be a toss up. Who knows? Part of me wants the showrunners to slow down. I would have loved an episode devoted even if it's just for one episode I would have loved to see Jocelyn and Clary go to Idris and I would have loved Clary to have been able to see you know what was left of Fairchild Manor and get to kind of learn about her history and her background and get to learn about Idris through her eyes and through her mother's eyes and I feel like that would have been a great way to kind of I mean because we know that in the next couple episodes we're going to get to meet um, Luke's sister, who is an Iron sister, Ironwood sister, Iron sister, something like that. And I feel like if they would have gone to Idris together on a little family vacay, you know, even if just for one episode, that would have been a great way to bring her in. But, you know, instead, we're not going to get any of that and Jocelyn's just going to die. I feel like it would have been really great to get to see Idris through their eyes because I'm I'm just I'm hoping we're gonna get to Idris soon because I really want to see their take on Idris I really want to see what it looks like through the sneak peeks we know that Clary and Izzy are gonna go visit the sisters in next week's episode I think I did because I'm we're gonna get to see that and we're gonna get to see you know, Clary trying to bring her mother back from the dead, which I feel like is a really bad idea, but yeah. Okay, anyways, I'm getting really ahead of myself. Let's back on up a little bit again. So while the Nephilim are having their issues, we're also having a lot of stuff going on in the downworlder side. So first of all, we have Alder Tree versus Raphael, and that scene was terrible and so sad, and I feel like this kind of shows the fact that the clave, screw the accords, will do whatever they need to do to try to get the answers that they think that they need. So we have Alder Tree torturing. He's torturing. Um, poor Raphael who has really done I mean like he's not like the best guy but he has not done n really anything wrong at this point especially not on the same line as Camille. Camille's just gotta go. 
and she did. But we're dealing with the fact that, you know, Raphael's pretty much being blamed for the fact that Camille, so we suppose it's Camille, has all of these vampire dens popping up all over the place. So because Raphael's apparently not getting Camille to the clay fast enough, they pretty much issue out a mandate that he has, I think, 12 hours to find Camille or Raphael and his entire clan is going to be punished and pretty much all of them are going to be killed. And so Raphael winds up going to Magnus and he has all of these crosses all over his face which is so sad because you know Raphael is a Catholic and the fact that he is getting not only the sun marks but also crosses which vampires are technically not supposed to be able to touch but like in the books um, Raphael trained with Magnus to be able to touch the cross and be able to say God and, and like he trained for years and years and years in order to be able to do this kind of stuff so I cannot imagine like like just knowing that you have scars of crosses all over your face like it's just it's such a horrible thing for Alder Tree to do but the fact that he went to Magnus for help and you know you really got to see that relationship between Magnus and Raphael but Again, that was another moment where I really just wanted to be like, slow down. Like, I would have loved to see, you know, Magnus taking more time to fix Raphael's face and have them talking more, maybe reminiscing more about about their relationship, maybe actually getting a flashback of when Raphael went to Magnus when he was first turned. Like, that's the kind of information I would love to see. It was very, very sped up in my mind because, you know, every, because the entire thing was, okay, we need to get back to the Institute, you know, we need to hurry up so we can get back on over to there. So I'm hoping that we will get more of the Downworlders backstories, but I hope that wasn't it. So but we'll see, but I really did enjoy that scene for what we got. I thought that it was so good. So we have the scene with... Magnus and Camille which was so intense to watch but so good. I love I love Caitlyn, the girl that plays Camille. She is beautiful. She plays such an amazing Camille. And you guys know that right before she filmed this, she had her baby like two, three months before they started filming this, and she looks fantastic. Magnus talks about how Camille pretty much saved him from committing suicide back in the 1800s, and if it wasn't for her, you know, who knows how the world would have turned out. But we, we have this whole moment where, you know, Magnus is like, my, you know, I'm, I'm not in love with her anymore, but she's a huge part in who I am. And then watching Camille manipulate him from inside that cage just kind of proved and showed how bad of a person Camille really is and how important it was and how needed it was for Magnus to do this. I think that he really made the right decision. I was really scared because at first when he sent Raphael and Simon away, I thought that he was going to wind up letting Camille go. And I'm so glad that's not what happened. And I just, again, this scene just felt very genuine, very real. The dialogue is getting so much stronger. So we hit the scene with Jace on trial in front of Alder Tree. And this scene crops up a lot of speculation that people think that Alder Tree is Sebastian in disguise with the shapeshifter rune. And I'm gonna be honest, we've done that. I do not want another huge plot twist to be the same thing of a person pretending to be another person. This shapeshifter rune, I'm a little iffy about it. I'm not gonna lie. I don't really, it's like, I, I feel like with a rune that serious and that, like, you know, that can do so much damage, I feel like there would be more laws around, you know, and I haven't really talked about this before now, but someone mentioned it in one of the comments in last in last week's video, so I did want to discuss it a little bit. I feel like that in order to make this rune feel more legit, <laughs> I feel like there would need to be more like stricter laws by the clave about it, that only certain people can do it, and if you are found doing so, you will be punished. I don't know, something. But I feel like that should not be a rune that a lot of people should be able to use just on a daily basis, because I feel like 
a lot of trouble could happen with that rune. I, just, I really hope that Alder Tree isn't Sebastian because a lot of people are suspicious about the fact that Alder Tree was so interested in Clary and Jace's relationship before and that he knew about Jace's past with Valentine about the Falcon and his attitudes and all of that stuff. So people are suspicious and are curious about it and I'm just like, please no. Please, no. So then we have the scene where Clary walks up and finds out that Alec has killed her mother. Wah, wah, wah. And this is where I kind of want to mention the fact that someone mentioned it on Tumblr and I really, really appreciated it. The fact that both, oh, and Lydia also like really got hurt. Forgot to mention that. But like Lydia, both Lydia and Jocelyn, I feel like did not get the fight scene that they deserved. I feel like I know that we're pressed for time. I get it, but again, slow down. It'll be okay. I really, really feel like we should have seen some more epic fight scenes because Jocelyn is supposed to be, was supposed to be like one of the like number one shadow hunters of her age, of her time. Like yeah, she hasn't fought in a while, but I don't think her skills would be that rusty. I feel like she should have given Alec a better like run for his money. And then same thing with Lydia. She's supposed to be this like badass like envoy from the clave. You would think that if she was that high up, she would know how to really fight as well and she shouldn't have dropped her Seraph blade like two seconds into the fight with Raj. Just saying. I feel like both fight scenes should have gotten kind of like the same like Izzy, Alec, and Clary ness that that scene got at the end of the episode you know Alec kill Jocelyn over the screen and and Claire's all like I have a demon to kill and she's all like emotional but like setting the emotions aside in order to avenge her mother and it was awesome um Kat's acting is getting better and better I'm really I'm, I'm really glad that she's doing so well I'm like rooting for it like, yeah like, yeah yeah Kat so one scene though that I did think that was like missing it just felt like awkward not having it was Raphael and Simon left Magnus's to go to Katarina's which I love that we got that name drop I love it I hope we actually get to meet Katarina soon at one point and I really want to meet Tessa too hopefully I'm just, yeah hopefully but so we have them heading off to Katarina's and then the next scene that we have of any of them is Simon suddenly on his own calling Clary and I feel like there was really no flow for that like how did Raphael and Simon know not to go all the way to Katarina's or did they get all the way there get those ingredients and then come back only to find out that you know Magnus already took care of it or like you know where they called on the way where Magnus was like never mind don't worry I got it she's done like I just I would have liked a little bit of that because I feel like it just conveniently en ended there just because Simon now needed to get to Clary so like they wanted Simon to be in the Institute when Clary when all that finished and I wish we would have gotten something there that tied that together a little better because that did feel a little choppy but then like I did say we did have the demon going inside of Izzy and attacking Clary and Alec and they're able to get the demon out of her but now there's like this really awkward like -ness. like I feel just I feel so bad for both Clary and Alec because I'm glad by the looks of it it looks like Clary is not going to blame Alec. Now we don't know what the next episode is going to say, but she seemed to be able to accept the fact that the demon was in Alec and so Alec was not the one to actually do it. And hopefully it continues that way. I'm. We already got a scene, you know, like I said earlier, where Magnus and Alec are talking and Alec is talking about how guilty he feels and how he can't even really face Clary and so we're gonna definitely see that side but I really wonder if we're gonna get a scene where Clary's like you know like I'm really hurting right now but I do understand that it wasn't you and even though you don't need it you're forgiven you know I kind of hope we get to see a scene like that because I don't want our gang to be split up even more than it already is because I felt a really really large divide at the very end of that of the episode where we had the Lightwoods which was so sweet by the way when when Jace went over to, for, to Izzy and Alec and they all kind of had like a little hug before Alec took Izzy I guess to the infirmary and then we had Simon and Clary over on the other side and and I just, I really felt a big divide between the Lightwoods and Clary and Simon. So I'm hoping that we're going to see a little bit of fixing from that. I, like, overall, I really, really enjoyed this episode a lot. 
I feel like, you know, and I am also noticing that the music is not nearly as intrusive as it's been in the past. They've really toned that down a lot because um, I haven't even really been noticing the music and that works for me. I'd rather kind of like acknowledge it in the background but not like really be like, oh, it's this song than be like, whoa, whoa. So that is pretty much all of my thoughts on this episode. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought that it was great. If there were any things that I didn't talk about or if there were any issues that you guys have with the show that I didn't mention, please, as always, leave them in the comments down below. I just, I felt just the need to gush about this episode. Which I didn't really feel the need to gush, like, in and be all giddy and happy about an episode like this one. This is the first episode where I really have felt that genuine excitement for Shadowhunters that I have and that I did in season one. So I'm really excited to have this feeling back, but I do want to make sure that I still stay true to talking about the things that did and did not work in the episode. So if there were any things that you guys did not like, please let me know down in the comments and we can all just talk about it because I love discussing with you guys about the different things that happened in the episode. So yes, make sure you guys leave those comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed it and make sure you are subscribed because I do make videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye! Between the wars we danced Between the wars we laughed